Netherlands on Saturday. It's a much better day here in terms of weather conditions than it was yesterday. It is dry. However, it is colder. The air temperature having crept up from four degrees when we all arrived at the circuit earlier on today to eight degrees now. But with the sun beating down, the track temperature is at a much better 18 degrees Celsius. And the Pirelli tyres will be liking that. This is the only race of the weekend to take place in dry conditions. Yesterday, the championship organizers elected to put all of the riders on the Pirelli wets. So what will they be able to do this time on the slicks? It all started back in Barcelona, as I say, a month ago. Now we're here at Assen, then we're on to Misano in Italy. A month from now, Donington Park in the UK in the middle of July. Manicure in France and Aragon, Spain, both in September to bring the curtain down. This is the end of the sighting lap. We've had a slight delay here at Assen, and so the World SBK organizers have decided to use the quick start procedure for the Blue Crew World Cup riders. That means they leave the pit lane for one sighting lap. Line up on the grid now with, as you can see for yourself, one mechanic per rider. Then they'll be released on a warm up lap, and then the race will begin. Yesterday's winner, Mark Vick, also set the fastest lap, which puts him on pole position alongside Shoma Yamani from Japan and Eduardo Burr from Brazil. Tong Damu from Thailand, David Novak, who was on the podium yesterday for Poland, and Takahashi, who also was on the podium for the first time ever, are on the second row of the grid. 16 riders in total. The great news overnight is that the two riders who were involved in the high-speed collision at the Rams hook, the penultimate corner yesterday, are both OK. One of them was Mario Salas, who was taken away on the stretcher and checked out in the medical center. The other was the championship leader, Gonzalo Sanchez. Looked to me as though he'd taken a little bit of a knock to the leg, but he's absolutely fine. They're walking around the paddock unaided, following their checks in the medical centre here with Monica Lazzarotti, who is the medical officer for World SBK. And now Sanchez will be looking to go out there today and defend his championship lead. The Spaniard is one point ahead of David Novak from Poland. Eduardo Burr from Brazil is third in the championship, seven points behind. Mark Vick, yesterday's winner, nine points behind. Takahashi, 20 points behind. Dorian Jalana, France, 23 behind. And then it's Yamani and Zanin, seventh and eighth in the championship. Any one of those eight riders could leave Assen this afternoon as an outright or at least joint championship leader. This is the final warm up lap now. Four and a half kilometres, 2.8 miles of Assen. So if you're just switching on, welcome along here on the Yamaha Racing YouTube channel. I'm Greg Haynes, and this is the fourth race of the season for the Yamaha R3 Blue Crew World Cup of 2024. A one-make series with plenty of opportunities for those who compete. The champion will receive a fully supported ride with a Yamaha motorcycle to next year's 2025 World Supersport 300 Championship. Second place will receive a 50% discounted entry. Third place, a 25% discounted entry. There's the weather conditions at the top of the screen. We did have a red flag yesterday, so we only got six laps of racing. Let's hope we go the full distance today in the dry weather. Two thirds cutoff is the end of lap six, but hopefully we'll get to 100% of the racing laps. And that's a 10 lap sprint to the flag here. And look at this crowd at Assen. It's a wonderful atmosphere. The Dutch fans always greet us in the most hospitable fashion every time we come to the north of the Netherlands. We're about 200 kilometers northeast of the capital city, Amsterdam. Gonzalo Sanchez there was psyching himself up. He's got a one point championship lead coming into this one. Mark Vick with the white helmet closest to us. Yesterday's winner, creeping, creeping. That was Eduardo Burr, third on the grid. Revs up. 
lights out, race go. Somebody definitely jumped the start further back. Mark Vick leads, though, from pole position on the run down to turn one for the first time here at Aston. Great start then from Mark Vick, and he leads into the first corner. Sanchez, the championship leader, is up into fifth position already, but runs wide coming out of turn one, and he's demoted to sixth place at turn two. What a glorious start, though, for number 96, the 17-year-old Mark Vick with the David Salom Junior School team. He is in the lead from pole position. Can he do what Sanchez did and confirm a double? That was back in Barcelona a month ago. This is Assen for round two. Mark Vick with an enormous advantage. Number 56 is pulling away now then because Yamani is up into that second place. Gustavo Sanchez was briefly third and he's still third as they tip it in to the Reston hook on the opening lap of this race. Everybody trying to sort themselves out. Which way do you go? That was Burr right around the outside with the bright yellow crash helmet. Very, very adventurous rider indeed is the Brazilian, but Mark Vick definitely with a handy advantage, but this could be a real head-to-head -head here. Sanchez is trying to go with him. Yamani, third place. There he is with the pink crash helmet. Burr cuts up the inside of David Novak. Lifelong Valentino Rossivan, who he's now demoted not just to fifth, but also to sixth position because Alessandro De Percio, the Italian, has gone through as well. They're closing in on Mark Vick at the front. Here's Sanchez. A maximum 50 points back in Barcelona with the most dominant ever victory in this championship of well over 11 seconds in the first race. But Neil Poir here on Saturday. But look at the fight for fourth position, 69. Just about getting into the decay without contact. Alessandro De Percio. And now Mark Vick is having to go defensive. Sanchez follows in the slipstream. It's 25 points for a win, 24 second position. And Sanchez is not late enough on the brakes. Down into the very, very tricky right-hander of Harbosch here at Assen. The surface was redone a few years ago. It's not yet as, uh, as bumpy as it used to be. There used to be a really, really big bump in the braking zone for turn one. Thankfully, nobody jumped the start. I feared somebody had but I was wrong because they all got away cleanly, and that's great news. Somebody's gone really, really wide, two of them. Really, really wide, coming out of the strub, and one of them was certainly Yamani, who's fallen down now from a podium position to seventh position. Vic, Sanchez, Novak, 46. Burr, 88, almost contact there with Alessandro de Percio. This is Eduardo Burr. You can see the Brazilian flag there on the back of his leathers. As Sanchez has a huge look at Mark Vick. The rider from Mallorca with the lead. His opponent from Aragon in second place. There goes to Kumi Takahashi, number 16. Now he's run wide and loses a position to De Percio. Can so easily happen there into the left-hander of De Bolt. And Sanchez cuts underneath Mark Vick. This is the fastest part of the track through the Hodger Heider section here at Assen. And Sanchez leads on the second of 10 laps. The first time we've seen a real head-to-head -head between these two this season. Vick back underneath him into the left-hander of the Rams hook. And Mark Vick retakes the lead. Here comes Sanchez again into the world-famous Gert Timo Chicane. And he's back in front now. The 16-year-old from Aragon. Everybody sorting themselves out down through the GT chicane. Look at the difference in lines as the leader tries to break the slipstream. Those following try to follow and get a toe. Novak dives up the inside, but somebody's down at the last chicane. Luckily, the rider is OK, but it's Indy Sunsalar who is down. A round of applause from the Dutch crowd, but Indy wanted so much more from his home round here in the Netherlands. This weekend, just getting his breath back after that crash through the Gert Timmer chicane. What happened? And he's run into the back of another rider who had to roll off the throttle to avoid contact himself. There was nothing Indy could do about that. There is the touch. And the 14-year-old from Utrecht is out of the race. Well, at least he's OK, and he'll be able to fight back at Mizano for round three in a month from now. But that's the last thing he needed, the last thing he wanted. Sanchez has another big look at Mark Vick back at the front of the race. 
Sanchez looks behind him. He knows that there's a big gap there, and I can tell you it's two and a half seconds. And this is why it's so big. They continue to fight, fight, fight this multiple contest for third position. Look at the way Vic just throws himself off the side of his Yamaha R3. De Percio, number 69. There's Sales, the original pole sitter this weekend, who didn't score points because of yesterday's crash going through. And Sanchez going through once again as well on Mark Vic. Can Mark repay the favour down into the chicane? And look at this, they're like lottery balls in a machine. 42, Salis is back in front of the pack. Good ride here for Mario Salis. Novak has a look on the inside line, slotting him behind De Percio there. That's Cameron Sway from Brisbane in Australia, number 26. And here we go again, because Mark Vick is on the left, Sanchez is on the right. They are three seconds ahead of the rest of the field, but what a treat they're giving us here for the lead in the fourth race of the season. They're at the top of the championship. They're at the top of their game. Who, though, is going to be on the top step of the podium in this race? Novak now is back up into third position behind. Look at all the movement going on. De Percio's in there. Sales, Burr, number 88, on the outside with a bright yellow crash helmet. Behind them is the number 58 of Nico Zanin, the 14-year-old from the Czech Republic. Cam Swain is in eighth position from Takahashi. Yamani's fellow Japanese rider, Dorian Jolan, who was right up there and fighting for podiums in Barcelona. 11th place at the moment. Konek of Turkey is 12th. Tong de Moon of Thailand, 13th. Borgelt, who had a crash yesterday and was out of the race for Germany, has just dropped behind Anastasi now. So the number 28 of Pietro Anastasi from Switzerland is into the points. 15 still running. Indy Sunsala gutted to be out of the race through no fault of his own. He ran into the back of another rider who had to roll off the throttle to avoid contact through the chicane, and Sunsalar was out a couple of laps ago. Here's the fight back at the front. It doesn't get much better than this. Graffiti artist and magician Mark Vick leading the way. Absolutely on the ragged edge of adhesion through the ram's hook and on the rev limiter as well, for that matter. Here's your fight for third position, all the way down to 11th position. Nine riders go into the chicane as one here at Assen. Will they all get through? Yes, they do, but exceeding track limits is Cameron Swain. His mum, Carol, is here this weekend, attending a race for the first time this season. Back at the front, another change because Sanchez edges his way back ahead of Mark Vick. Now, every time, of course, they do this, the man in second place is just able to survey the rider ahead of him. Where am I stronger? Where are you weaker? That's a very, very, very adventurous outside line there for Mark Vick. He's playing with him. But if Sanchez can break away, can he do what he did in Barcelona? He certainly wouldn't be winning here by 11 seconds. Of that, there is no doubt. I'm not sure he will be able to. What have they done with the gearing? There are three different options available with the sprockets. All of the teams run by either Yamaha federations from around the world. There's some very small family efforts as well. Many of them father-son relationships. Incidentally, plenty of Yamaha riders are here at Assen this weekend, talking with all the guys and girls. Plenty, 15 of them. R3 and R125 Blue Crew racers from the Benelux Championship here at Assen this weekend. They've had a tour of the R3 World Cup Village the Pater Prometian Yamaha pit box, and they've even been catching up with Jonathan Ray, Locatelli, Gardner, and Agatha, I believe giving them a few tips as to where they can improve. Down to the left-hander at the Ramsar, absolutely side-by-side side as we look through the heat haze here. The track temperature now by far the hottest all weekend long, 18 degrees Celsius, even though the air temperature is only nine degrees Celsius. Takahashi now has muscled his way up into third position. There's Mark Vick. Sanchez comes up alongside him. A dress rehearsal these laps to see whether they can get enough of a run out of the chicane to swap positions. The line comes up very quickly here at Assen. 
We've only just hit the half race distance cutoff though, so five laps still to go. And it's anyone's guess as to who's going to finish third. Somebody muscled completely wide around the right-hander on the exit of turn one. It was Zanin, number 58, the 14-year-old from the Czech Republic on the Dafit motor racing bike. Down then to the back of the group in 11th place. There's Burr, 88 from Brazil, 42. Novak from Poland, alongside the number 42 now of Mario Salas. Novak, number 56. Salas is trying to go right around the outside. Oh, he's done it. What a move from the Brazilian rider to pass his compatriot, Eduardo Burr. That was wonderful stuff from Salas. Burr has been punished for that one because Novak's gone through as well. There's the leaders. They're now five seconds ahead of this fight for third. Four laps to go when they next cross the line here at Assen. Wonderful racing again here in the Yamaha R3 Blue Crew World Cup. Let's hope the rain stays away. Some of the locals I was talking to earlier on this morning here in the Netherlands are expecting rain in the afternoon. But if it did start, this race would be stopped because they do not come in for pit stops. They're all on slick tyres and it's almost four abreast. Oh, nearly contact. People moving around in the middle of the gaggle. They need to be mighty careful not to make contact because it can knock the pads back on the brakes and then you get to the chicane with no stopping ability whatsoever. Mark Vick back in front of the race. Moves over on Sanchez all the way down the start finish straight here at Assen. It's a legendary head to head. If these two go on to success in the likes of MotoGP or World Superbikes in the future, we'll be looking back at this race. The scrap that Vic and Sanchez had at Assen in 2024 in the Blue Crew World Cup. Wind yourself up at this part of the track now because you're coming through the right-handers of turns two, three and four into the Strubben. Used to be a much more banked corner back in the day before they shortened Assen in 2005 and 2006. Novak, number 46. Very much a title contender this season. He's still second in the championship coming into this race. One point behind Gustavo Sanchez. There goes Burr up the inside on the number 88. De Percio, 69 of Italy, third on your screen, but fifth in the race. The question will be, do you want to be ahead when you get to the last chicane? Okay, well, you certainly don't want to be over there. That was Takahashi and it was Novak. Takahashi from Japan, number 16. Oh, and he's sat up now. Here's the fight back at the front, and there's only three laps to go when they cross the line this time, and it's absolutely impossible to call. Vic still with the advantage. He really could do with a double here this weekend. I want to be World Superbike champion was the official line he gave us, but there's been an incident further back at turn seven. Number 28, Pietro Anastasi from Switzerland is out of the race. So we are down now to 14 runners with Anastasi having crashed at the Ruston Hook chicane, the left-hander, the quick chicane at the end of the back straight behind the pits. So Sun Solar of the Netherlands is out. Anastasi is now out as well on the sidelines. The rider from Switzerland, and there he is. At least he's absolutely fine. And on the back of the moped there, the 16-year-old with the Arco team, and he's lost the front end all by himself on the exit there. And look at the speed they're doing across the gravel onto the runoff area. And Anastasi, that's a shame because he was on for some really strong points here. Done a fair amount of damage to the bike, but the most important thing by far, of course, is that Pietro is OK. So number 28 out, down to 14 runners. And now we are on to the eighth of the 10 laps, three to go, including this one. Mark Vick from Mallorca is leading. Sanchez from Aragon in Spain is second. Almost seven seconds ahead of the rest of the field. And this pack headed up by Alessandro De Percio, the rider from Italy. Mark Vick, a big reggaeton fan, also a fan of the Iron Man films. So he does like an odd visit to the cinema when he's back home in Mallorca, of course, coming from Palma de Mallorca, very much following in the footsteps 
of Jorge Lorenzo, three-time MotoGP world champion of 2010, 2012, and 2015. Is Sanchez going to deny him right in the last knockings of the race? Sanchez, the second of these two riders, number 23. Inspired by Mark Marquez. His earliest racing memories at seven years of age when he won the Spanish championship and then the super finale for the R3s last year, which gave him his free entry into this Blue Crew R3 World Cup. And there'll be another super finale at the end of this season in which the riders from the various Blue Crew World Cups around the world, Spain, France, the Benelux region, Italy, Thailand and South America will all come together. And once again, the winner of this year's super finale in 2024 will be given an entry to this class, the Blue Crew World Cup for next season. And incidentally, the champion of this class is promoted with a fully supported ride to the Supersport 300 World Championship. This is the penultimate lap of the race. A real thriller here at the Cathedral of Speed. I'll feel sorry for Mark Vick if he is denied by Sanchez in the closing stages of the race, but Gustavo's as smart as they come. And he's been behind Vic for most of the race. I am absolutely sure that Sanchez will know exactly where he wants to come through. Let's see who's strongest on the brakes now. You'll see the front of the bike dip when they hit the brakes. There. This is the bolt corner. And now they're winding themselves up for the really quick stuff at the end of the lap here at Assen. The Mandevane, turn 10. This is the Duke suit, turn 11. Third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear. Sanchez looks behind him. No need, Gustavo. They're five seconds behind you with De Percio now heading up that scrap for third position. Through the Rams hook. This is where the crash happened yesterday when Sales and Sanchez both went down and the red flag came out as a result. Sanchez quite clearly choosing not to dive up the inside into the last chicane. Following Vic through the right, through the left, through the right. They look across at their pit boards. This is the 10th and final lap of the second and final race of the weekend here at Assen. Mark Vic, number 96 for Mallorca with the advantage. Right behind him, the Aragon rider Gustavo Sanchez. And then five seconds further back, it's this scrap for third place. And there's contact there because Bert and Salis, the two Brazilians, bumped handlebars coming out of turn one. De Percio still in third place, number 69, the rider from Italy. David Novak of Poland is trying to do something about him, but David's lost momentum. He's on the defensive now. Salis, Takahashi's in there. Burr is muscled out wide on the outside, and you can't even see Sanchez because he's so close to the back of Mark Vick. As we come down the Rienslang, the back straight at Assen for the 10th and final time, is he going to deny him in the closing stages of the race? Through the Ruston hook. There's an overtaking opportunity coming up at the very next corner. He's chosen not to take it. I think Sanchez is going to sit in behind Vic and follow him all the way down to the last chicane. And look in the background. People running wide. It's anyone's guess as to who's going to finish in third place with eight of them all fighting away there. Mark Vic, a three-time winner in this championship, including his win here yesterday. Sanchez, a two-time winner. That was his double at Barcelona a month ago. Get ready, because this is going to be a grandstand finish. He's almost on the curb. He is on the curb. Vic just about giving him enough space. Sanchez up the inside for the lead on the last lap here at Aston. And now the only opportunity for Mark Vic is to get in the toe, dive up the inside, be later on the brakes, but Sanchez covering him off nicely. If he loses momentum as the crowd goes mad, which he has, Vic might come up alongside. Absolutely together here at Aston. Side by side over the line they go. And it's Absolutely locked together, 18 thousandths of a second. Gustavo Sanchez has got it. Sanchez has got it. He had the most dominant win ever in this class. Back at Barcelona with a lead of over 11 seconds a month ago. And that was one of the closest ever finishes. 18 thousandths of a second there. And Sanchez does deny Mark Vick 
right at the end of the race. Eduardo Burr wins that amazing monumental scrap for third ahead of Takahashi Novak and Jolan did well. Dorian Jolan, the Frenchman, up from 10th to 6th in the last few metres of the race, pushing De Percio, who's been third for much of the race, all the way down to 7th place. Salas, Yamani and Cameron Swain of Australia completing the top 10. There's Takahashi. He was absolutely made up with his second place here on Saturday. He's fourth this time. Here's Eduardo Burt. He was fourth yesterday, and this time finishes on the podium for Brazil. And he'll be absolutely delighted and thrilled with that when he gets into Perk Ferme. That's his second podium of the season, and his third in the R3 Blue Crew World Cup, and strengthening his championship position as well now, up into fourth place. Sanchez has increased the lead over Mark Vic to 14 points. Novak, one behind Vic. Burr, one behind Novak. 16 points is all it is between the top four in the championship, heading to the next races, the fifth and sixth of the season at Mizano in Italy on the beautiful Adriatic coast. And that'll be on the weekend of the 14th to the 16th of June. What racecraft we saw there, though, from the two at the front. Number 57 is Mitya Borgelt, pleased with a finish. Two points for 14th. Lost a lot of data and uh, time yesterday, though, with the crash in race one. But what can you say about Gonzalo Sanchez Melendez to give him his full name? He was a little bit worried yesterday when he took a knock to the leg when he was involved in that high-speed crash. Very, very lucky not to be badly hurt. And so was Mario Salas at the last corner. But they were both back in the race today. And Sanchez, he may have failed to score points in the third race of the season, but he scored maximum points in the first, the second, and the fourth. 25, 25, 25, 75 now in the championship. He'd run a bit wide there into the last chicane. He just avoids the green paint, which would have been a penalty. Look how he's fair and gives Vic the racing room. Mark comes up alongside with greater momentum. And this is what 18 thousandths of a second looks like. You can see that the front wheel of Sanchez on the left-hand side is over the main plane of the line first. And that confirms him as the winner of the fourth race of the season. And what a way to do it. The two at the front there were in a league of their own. The two Spaniards almost five seconds ahead of the rest of the field. Vic in, congratulated by colleagues at the Kawasaki Racing Team. And here comes Burt celebrating his podium. Well done to the Brazilian. A solid 16 championship points there for the 17-year-old from Cacapitua, Sao Paulo in Brazil. But the winner is lapping up the plaudits here, Gonzalo Sanchez. With support from the Blue Crew Yamaha Racing Spain camp, takes a bow. He knows he won that one fair and square. Taking time to thank the marshals here at Aston, who've had a particularly busy time down into that last chicane in particular. And the fans now waiting for the main races of the day here. And who, I wonder, in this field is also going to be in the World Super Sport 300 Championship next year. They will be out on track next after this race. And then we've still got World Superbikes and World Supersport later on the agenda. There's a Northern Talent Cup race this weekend as well here at Aston. They start their season with a double header. But this man, it's ominous, isn't it, for the rest of the field. Gonzalo Sanchez. Every race he's finished so far this year, he has won. And it's almost Alvaro Bautista-esque in the way he comes so strong in the closing stages of races. Here he comes. He's still just 15 years old from Telwell, Aragon in northeastern Spain. Gonzalo Sanchez with a third win from four races at the start of the R3 World Cup of 2024. Thank <laughs> you.
He'll be back up in the Spanish mountains later in the week on course and celebrating that one. He'll be chatting with Georgia Wells as well in a minute to celebrate his victory. 18 thousandths of a second then, as you can see for yourself. Burr edging out Takahashi. Jolan did well to shoot up to fifth, having been at the back of the group for much of the race. Swain, tenth in the end for Australia. Anastasi out with a crash, as was Indy Sunsala. But good news that 14 of the 16 starters made the chequered flag. Mark Vick saying there, I knew I wasn't going to quite get past at the end, chatting with family and friends. David Novak, in the meantime, has just been penalised and drops one position down from fifth to sixth for exceeding track limits and touching the dreaded green paint through the final chicane on the last lap of the race. But now Sanchez will join Georgia Wells after another glorious win. Yeah, uh, very happy because this weekend is not good at, after this, this race. Uh, yeah, uh, very good race, intelligent, uh, thinking with the heart, all the, all the race uh, behind, my, uh, behind the other rider. And in the last lap, I attacked, and then in the chicane, I pushed with all and then I, I win the race. Yeah, I'm very happy. Uh, this, this weekend, would I say, it's not, not so easy, uh, a bit difficult. Yesterday, I have a problem in the race. I crashed, and today we are here uh, in the P1. Uh, thank you for all to, to support me, because if he don't support me, it's not possible to do this. And that's it. Uh, thank you to, to my sponsors, to my family, and also to my team to, to support me all the days. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias, Gon, and thank you very much, Georgia, as well. Here's the moment then in the closing stages of the race. Gonzalo Sanchez, number 23. Mark Vick, number 96. Sanchez goes defensive through the chicane, loses some momentum on the exit. He's on the shorter inside run to the line. Vic comes up alongside, close but no cigar. 18 thousandths of a second. And it's Sanchez, last year's Spanish Super Sport 300 champion, who comes through. It's a third win of the season. He can win from pole and he can dominate. He can come through and recover from a crash and Pip arrival on the run to the line. His racecraft has been quite sublime so far this year. <laughs> Up onto the podium they will go. First live shots then of our paddock show for the people around the circuit and at home. All of the fans able to make their way into the paddock here at World SBK. Get involved with all of the celebrations as well as the paddock show. Looks a bit more like the uh, main stage at Glastonbury, doesn't it? It's bigger and bigger and bigger every year, thanks to the efforts of Michael Hill, who's the voice you can hear in the background there. There's your winning motorcycle, though. Gonzalo Sanchez. 15, won't turn 16 until the 20th of August this year. And he'll be ending the season at his home motorland Aragon. The rest of the field will be hoping that the championship is still alive because the sort of pace he's demonstrating at the moment is pretty scary for everybody else. But Vic really, really pushed him there. Edo Burr up on the podium as well. There's Vic on your left-hand side, the rider from Mallorca. And up onto the podium will come Luca Myers now, the 2017 World Supersport champion with Yamaha. There he is. He'll be racing here later on this afternoon. Third place it is then for number 88, Eduardo Burt from San Paulo, Brazil. 17 years old. Also 17 from Parma, the capital of Mallorca, is Mark Vick. 
with the David Salam Racing School team. Lucas back on the podium, hopefully for his sake. He'll be back up there later for himself as well. But it's the 23, Gonzalo Sanchez, number 15, or oh, age 15, I should say, up there on the top of the podium. Goes through the procedure, places his board down there on the podium. The Spanish national anthem for Sanchez and now the Japanese anthem for Yamaha. If I can ask the uh, three uh, gentlemen on the podium just to stand together, please, on the top step, we'll get... And I'm sure they'll get a chat with Luca Myers as well, the GMT 94 Yamaha rider from World Supersport to get a few top tips from the 2017 Supersport World Champion. There's your top three then after an electric fourth race of the season for the Yamaha R3 Blue Crew World Cup in 2024. Uh, as we do with the world super white guys, we're going to ask you just to stay on the uh, stage. Gonzalez Sanchez fights through to a third win from four races. Mark Vick just 18 thousandths of a second behind. Burr third to complete the podium. And Novak demoted to sixth for exceeding track limits on the last lap. Unlucky for Sunsalar of the Netherlands and Anastasi of Switzerland, both out of the race. But 14 do make the finish. Let's have a look at the championship standings heading to Mizano in June. Sanchez. Ahead of Mark Vick, Burt, Novak, Takahashi, and Jolan completing the top six. And there's the rest of the field, including some of the Spanish wildcard riders, the likes of Natalia Rivera, who were with us for the opener in Barcelona a month ago. So a glorious, glorious race there at Assa. Many thanks for joining us here on the Yamaha Racing YouTube channel and your comments we were watching throughout the race. Thanks for me, Greg Haynes, and all of us here at Yamaha. We'll be back for Mizano for round three in the month of June. Can anyone stop Gonzalo Sanchez? Um, in not, uh, La Peninsula. Uh, I forgot in Spain, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh,